Every day, our bodies are attacked by billions of microscopic invaders. Bacteria, viruses, fungi, and even parasites are found both on and in our bodies. However, germs are constantly changing, so our defenses must change with them. This is where antibodies come in. In the vertebrae immune system, each antibody is customized to attack a specific antigen without attacking the body itself, like a lock and key. The human genome has at most 30,000 genes, but generates millions of different antibodies, so you can respond to invasion from all these different antigens. The immune system generates this diversity of antibodies in a process called VDJ recombination, where the VDJ genes are shuffled, cut, and recombined to create millions of permutations. RAG1 and RAG2 are proteins that play an important role in this process that occurs in B cells and T cells during their maturation. In the early 1990s, it was shown that two tightly linked genes, RAG1 and RAG2, which are recombination activating genes, were responsible for the generation of antigen receptor diversity. There are five main classes of antibodies, but they all share the same general structure, two heavy chains and two light chains. Each chain has a constant and variable domain. The variable domain binds the antigen and is located by the amino terminal region. The constant domain is located at the carboxy terminal. The variable domain is divided into three distinct subdomains, the amino terminal variable region V, the central diversity region D, and the carboxy joining region J. Light chains only have the V and J regions. The constant domain has several constant regions, but only one is used when determining the type of heavy chain. The heavy chains have V, D, and J regions, while the light chains only have V and J regions. V, D, J recombination provides variability for the genes. Animation will show VDJ recombination. Gene segments that can be recombined have specific sequence motifs adjacent to them called recombination signal sequence or RSS motifs. A protein complex containing RAG1 and RAG2 binds specifically to the RSS motifs, and they initially nick the upstream end of the RSS heptamer, which makes a free hydroxyl group on the coding end, which is then covalently linked to the opposite phosphodiester bond. This leaves a covalently closed hairpin on the coding end and a blunt phosphorylated signal end. These two groups are coupled by binding the hydroxyl group on the coding end to the phosphorylated group. In this example, the gene segments are selected randomly. The RAG protein complexes bring together the gene segments to be recombined and cleave the DNA at the junction of the gene segment and its RSS motif. The cleavage creates a hairpin of DNA at the end of the gene segments and double-stranded breaks at the ends of the RSS motifs. Additional proteins, DNA-dependent protein kinase, Ku, Artemis, and a DNA ligase and XRCC4 dimer are incorporated into a complex with the RAG proteins. These RSS ends are joined together and form a signal joint to create a closed circle of DNA, which leaves and has no further role in the recombination process. The DNA hairpins at the ends of the gene segments are then cleaved and additional enzyme TDT is recruited and adds nucleotides to the ends of the DNA strands. The other enzymes in the complex ligate together the two ends of the gene segments and complete the recombination process. The structure of RAG1 and 2 play an integral role in this mechanism. RAG proteins are pretty large. For example, mouse RAG1 contains 1,040 amino acids and mouse RAG2 contains 527. Both have a heavily conserved core where enzymatic activity of the RAG protein is concentrated. Residues 384 to 454 of RAG1 comprise a nonomer binding region that specifically binds the conserved nonomer of the RSS, and the central domain of RAG1 binds specifically to the RSS heptamer. The core region of RAG2 is predicted to form some kind of structure that resembles a six-bladed beta propeller that seems to be less specific than RAG1 for its target. The RAG1 core also contains three acidic residues, D600, D708, and E962, that form what is called the DDE motif. This is the major active site for DNA cleavage. The presence of these residues is critical for both the nicking and the hairpin formation in VDJ recombination. They also likely function to coordinate a couple magnesium ions in the active site. The magnesium ions activate a water molecule for nucleophilic attack of the phosphate group to the RSS heptamer in that first nicking step. The active site magnesium ion then activates the newly exposed 3-hydroxyl group for the transesterification reaction yielding the hairpin coating end. RAG1 and RAG2 form RAG recombinases. This is a heterotetramer that is Y-shaped with the amino terminal domains of the two RAG1 chains forming an intertwined stock. The two RAG1 chains are shown here in blue and green ribbon, and the RAG2 subunits are shown in magenta. The active sites are highlighted by the three carboxylates, shown as red sticks, and the zinc ions are shown as dark red spears. 
Each RAG1, RAG2 heterodimer composes one arm of the Y with the active site in the middle and RAG2 at its tip. There are four zinc ions that help organize the entire domain, including the two helices that form the dimer interface. So, in conclusion, RAG proteins are essential to maintaining the diversity of our immune system and keeping us happy and healthy. An example of what happens without functioning RAG proteins is a genetic disorder called Omen syndrome. Omen syndrome is an autosomal recessive severe combined immunodeficiency that's associated with mutations in immunologically relevant genes of T and B cells, which includes recombination activating genes. Basically, the mutated RAG genes cause the cells to have limited levels of recombination and also be autoreactive. Some of the symptoms are skin inflammation, swollen lymph nodes, swollen spleen, diarrhea, etc. And without proper treatment, this disease is fatal in infancy. I didn't put any pictures up because they're kind of gruesome as it causes the skin to be red, scaly, and peel. The link between RAG genes and this disease shows that they are essential for gene recombination in the T and B cell receptors. And that loss of this ability means that the immune system has difficulty recognizing specific pathogens. Overall, this leads to loss of diversity and failure in the immune system. But with properly functioning RAG proteins, everyone's immune system can adapt and fight back.